Welcome back to Fish the 406. My name is Eric. Today we're going to be talking about how the climate change actually provided Montana with bull trout, not Dolly Vardens, and why there's such a huge confusion between the two species. I was also a victim of this. I always use the words Dolly Varden and bull trout interchangeably. This is not correct. They are, in fact, two different species. So let's get into it. I'm going to take you back 34 to 33 million years ago during the Paleocene uh, era. This is the time when all dinosaurs were taking a dirt nap and this was a time when there was probably no ice on earth. So if there's no ice on earth that means there's no ice in Glacier National Park as well. And the only reason I bring, bring up Glacier National Park is because I read this article, uh, Montana Living, I'll leave all the links down below, but it said that there was an underwater forest in Lake McDonald, and I thought this was pretty interesting. And the article goes uh, to say that, you know, there might have been a massive drought in Lake McDonald, and these trees were able to grow, and then all, the, then all of a sudden it got filled up with water. The more I look into this, the more it could be fake um, information. I don't know. I would have to go back and look at the article, but as of right now, that article is not working. The scientist was saying maybe 200 years ago there was a massive drought in this area uh, that obviously lowered Lake McDonald 70 feet and allowed these trees to grow. But the more you look into it, I mean, on Glacier National Park website, they said most likely these trees are there because of a flooding and just runoff from a Sprague Creek, I think it's called. So who knows? I don't know if there's actually an underwater forest. The, the pictures are pretty convincing. If you look it up, it looks like these trees actually were growing out of the ground at one point. But maybe they just landed like that. I don't know. But I thought that was pretty cool to think about um, Lake McDonald being so much lower at one point. But who, who actually knows? Let's move forward to 2.6 million years ago to our last ice age. This is the last ice age that we know of. We're basically on the tail end of it right now. That The end of the ice age was around 11,000 years ago. So you have to think about the entire Glacier National Park, this entire area, the Flyhead Valley, Missoula, you have some parts of Canada, uh, just huge sheets of ice covering the entire valley floor. And then all of a sudden it started to melt. And then we got all this water runoff, uh, started carving Glacier National Park, making it is what it is today, obviously leaving a few glaciers. They are receding at the moment. You also have uh, Missoula Lake, I think it's called, or Lake, Lake Missoula. They predict that there was an ice dam there, the 12,000 feet high, blocking a lot of the water behind it. And then one day it kind of just broke. And then all of a sudden the huge forces kind of wiped out that entire area. That's why I kind of think if you look at it, it looks kind of flat and there's no trees or anything kind of living in that area. So it's kind of cool to think about that this whole area just was under complete chaos um, 11,000 years ago. So if we looked at the ice age and everything started to melt, we know that Flyhead Lake was also an iceberg. It was frozen solid, right? Like McDonald's was frozen solid. All these lakes were frozen solid at one point, meaning probably no fish were living here during that time. So as the, as the water started melting, obviously we know that the Flyhead Lake flows into the Columbia River, which flows into the Pacific Ocean. So my theory is once Flyhead Lake <laughs> finally melted, the bull trout from the Pacific Ocean were able to run up the Columbia River, up to the Flyhead River, and into Flyhead Lake. And I believe that is how we actually got bull trout. And from there, I mean, obviously they lived in Flyhead Lake, and then they can branch out, right? They can branch out into Lake McDonald, Logging Lake, Kentla Lake, Bowman Lake, Quartz Lake, Upper Quartz Lake, other different lakes uh, within Glacier National Park. They can go up to the South Fork and go up to uh, Bob, or the yeah Bob Marshall Wilderness. They can go up North Fork. They can travel all the way up into Canada now, and spread out there. So it's it's pretty cool. So that is my theory how climate change actually provided Montana with bull trout, not Dolly Bar not Dolly Vardens. I say not Dolly Vardens because as far as I know, there's no Dolly Vardens uh, that far north uh, in that drainage where they can actually come up. And I believe Dolly Vardens don't like to travel as far as bull trout do. Maybe at one point there were Dolly Vardens here. As far as I know, there's no Dolly Vardens anywhere 
in Montana. And if there was, probably wouldn't know anyway. So why was there such a huge confusion between Bull Trout and Dolly Vardens? Well, this we actually have to go back in time as well. Let's go back to 1758 when the first description of an Arctic char, right? So now there's a description of Arctic char. So any, any fish that look like that, whether it's a bull trout, dolly varden, salmon, maybe a brook trout, it's like, okay, that is that is a char family. How they came up with different names throughout the different regions of the world, I, I have no clue. I don't know if Alaska first named them bull trout or dolly vardens. I don't know if Montana named them bull trout or dolly varden. But I do know in California, they first called them bull trout or calico trout first. So this group of people saw these fish spawning, right? And this, I guess this 15-year-old girl named Elda saw them spawning as well and didn't like the name bull trout or calico trout and said, let's call them Dolly Vardens. And she got that from the book uh, Charles Dickinson, uh, Barnaby Rudge uh, book, because in that novel it said that uh, Dolly Varden was a fabric at that time that was green with crimson polka dots. And we know that bull trout have polka dots and they have a, a green hue if you look at them in the water. So apparently that's how Dolly Varden got started and since then California named the bull trout Dolly Vardens or they used them interchangeably. And obviously that rumor spread up north because still to this day we are calling them, at least I was, calling them Dolly Vardens and bull trout as well. 1965, California made a dam in the McLeod River. This was the only known location of bull trout, was in McLeod Lake and McLeod River. And then one or 10 years later, the last two bull trout were caught out of the river. They've never seen them since, and they are now considered to be extinct in California. And then we come up to 1978, when we finally got the DNA testing between the two. We now know that bull trout and Dolly Vardens are completely separate species. They do their own thing, they do interlap with each other every once in a while, but they are two different species. So since they're two different species and they look very similar, the, the average angler, the average biologist, the average um, parks ranger, they can't tell the difference between the two. Does it really matter at that point? No, it doesn't matter because bull trout were not endangered at that point. When it does come a concern is when bull trout were when bull trout became an endangered species, I believe in 98, at least in Montana, this can be a concern not in Montana, but mostly in Washington state because Washington state has Dolly Vardens coming in and bull trout interlapping with each other. If the average person can't tell the difference between Dolly Varden and bull trout, how do you regulate something like that? Well, you have to propose what's called the Similarity of Appearance Act along with the Endangered Species Act of bull trout. Meaning, if you catch a Dolly Varden, even though they're not endangered, you have to release it because you just you can't tell the difference unless you take their DNA. Now, I don't know how this totally works. We know that bull trout are mostly landlocked. Dolly Vardens live in the ocean. They come up upstream and spawn. So I don't know if there's certain areas in Washington where you can fish for Dolly Vardens and keep them, and there's certain areas in Washington where you have to, uh, where bull trout and Dolly Vardens overlap. However, you still have to release uh, all of them just because you can't tell the difference. Still the confusion in Montana. I, I think there's still a confusion in Montana. At least, you know, when I was growing up, my dad, my uncles were calling, you know, bull trout Dolly Vardens. Uh, Dolly Varden's bull trout. They were, the word was used interchangeably. So it's still being used to this day. I know it is. I even have a few books that show Dolly Varden or bull trout. If you Google Dolly Varden Glacier National Park, it's going to bring up some, I mean, older articles uh, past, I think, 78, talking about Dolly Varden's in Glacier National Park. So it's still being used to this day. Um, and really, the only way you'd probably know the difference between the two species of fish is if you're going to school learning about fisheries or something like that or you actually just read up on it and trying to figure it out yourself. Other than that you probably just don't know and in Montana it doesn't really matter anyway because you'd have to release all of it. Release the Dolly Varden and the Bull Trout. But as far as I know there is no Dolly Varden in Montana. So that is my theory how Montana got Bull Trout <laughs> within the, the watersheds of Montana 
and also cutthroat as well because we know there's coastal cutthroat and they probably swam they probably swam up with the bull trout as well so i hope you guys like this video and my theory i'm fairly certain this is how it's happened but i am not 100 percent certain but i'll see you guys next time thanks for watching